Hello, boys and girls, it's Fog again. Before we get to the show, I thought I'd give everyone a quick update on my last video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can click that link in the lower left corner to learn the details. And if you don't want me to bore you with my problems, you can click the link in that other corner down there to skip ahead to today's episode. First, thanks to all of you who replied with words of encouragement or attempts to help. I appreciate it very much. Unfortunately, all our attempts have so far been in vain. Late the other night, I received a form letter from our friends at Google informing me that they would not be restoring my AdSense account. You can find the complete text of that letter in the description below, but the parts that have me most upset are this one. Quote, Once we've reached a decision on your appeal, further appeals may not be considered and you might not receive any further communication from us. Note that AdSense publishers whose accounts are disabled for violations of our terms and conditions are not eligible for further participation in AdSense. For this reason, you may not open new accounts. Unquote. And this one, quote, because we have a need to protect our proprietary detection systems, we are unable to provide our publishers with any details about their account activity, unquote. Now, it's not so much that I mind losing a potential source of revenue, although that certainly would have been nice. No, what I really mind is that their action essentially amounts to both an accusation and conviction of fraudulent behavior. I have always prided myself on my ethics and integrity, and now I feel that through absolutely no fault of my own, I've been labeled a cheater. I've not been told how they think I've cheated, I've had the burden of proof placed solely upon me, and I've not been given any reasonable means to defend myself since they won't even tell me what they think I did. Did my fans click on too many ads? Do they think that I've been using some of my family members to artificially boost my statistics? Uh, I do have a large family, but no, I have not been doing that. Perhaps they think my kids' accounts are actually fraudulent accounts. No, the kids really exist. I have birth certificates to prove it. Uh, how could I know, since they refuse to tell me? Uh, their appeals process appears to be a formality at best. No one has made any attempt to contact me in any way other than through a form letter. I can find no indication that they even bothered to read what I wrote in my appeal. I've been over and over their terms of service, and I can't for the life of me imagine what they think I might have done wrong. Without the ability even to know what it is they think I've done, and without access to any detailed traffic logs or click metrics, I mean, YouTube provides me with very little of that, and certainly nothing that they don't already have access to themselves, how am I supposed to mount any sort of defense? It's just not possible. So unless they have a change of heart, which isn't likely, I'm completely powerless to do anything about this situation. I can't defend what I don't understand. I can't even open a new account because I've, assen I'm as I've essentially now been permanently blacklisted. How is that fair? Whatever happened to Google's motto of do no evil? Clearly that motto was just words. Oh well. At this point, it's all tilting at windmills. The only consolation prize in all of this is that if you are seeing this video, it means that I am still able to post longer videos. So at least I still have that. Well, anyway, I'm not going to let this ruin my day. Thanks again for all of your support. I'm just going to keep on doing what I do, and hopefully it won't ruin our day. For now, let's just get on with the show. Hello boys and girls, it's Fog, and welcome back to Fog's World, Episode 8. Well, we start with some bad news. Yeah, 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 the death counter, death counter went up one. I had another death. Yeah, I, 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 I started filming this episode a little earlier, and uh, I'm afraid I was a little careless, and I fell in some lava. Which was bad. Um, so we're going to start over. and uh, <laughs> But I'm going to count the death. So there you go. So what are we doing today? I'll tell you what we're doing today. Today we are going to start work on our base. And finish working on the mob grinder up, up above. Now you might ask, well, why are we building the base here instead of out in the ocean by the blaze spawner? And that's a fair question because, you know, at the surface it might seem like 
you know, half dozen of one or six of the other. But it turns out that uh, this is a better location. And the reason this is a better location is because we know that below us we have a network of things to explore. Uh, you know, we have a stronghold below us, which is going to have chests and it's going to have all sorts of things that we can explore. It's got our portal to the to the end eventually once we light it up. And, and it's also closer to the mainland where we know that we have biomes that we can explore and things like that, which we will be visiting from time to time. Uh, and going through the, the nether portal to the uh, going through the nether portal to the blaze spawner isn't really that big of a deal. So I decided this was a better place for it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an above ground base here, above the ocean, at uh, right up here, at 128 blocks above the ocean. This is going to become the nucleus of our base. We're going to build a mob grinder. We're going to build a lot of little areas that we can do stuff, and we'll just expand on this as we need it. And this will become our base, a nice controlled environment where we can put things. Now in order to make this happen, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a round platform here, 21 blocks in diameter, and above that will go our mob grinder. I'm also going to build a smooth stone generator here and a temporary tree farm so that we can have coal to feed our ovens and whatnot and turn our stone into whatever we want it to or such things as that. Uh, and I'm going to build this platform, like I said, 21 blocks in diameter, but I'm also going to build it eight blocks deep. And the reason I'm building it eight blocks deep is so that I have room to build things below ground. And that's going to be the pattern for this base here. Um, before I get started, though, we need to have some stone with which to work. And so that's, uh, that's job one, is getting us some, some of this stone to work with. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to build most of it out of half slabs because that's a little bit more economical. Um, and now I have a bit of a conundrum in that I'm going to <laughs> want to put some stuff down and I'm hoping it's not going to throw it all the way down. Oh, good. All right. So we'll put you here, here, and here, and we will build you there and let's get busy building half slabs oh except before I do we need a chest to put things in like that so that we don't keep dumping things on the ground got a bunch of materials here so that we can build what we need to build and this ought to be enough to just get things started. So let's get going here. Build some half slabs. Like I said, the reason I want to use half slabs is because there's uh, two half slabs to the brick, right, to the full brick. And for the most part, they're equivalent. It's not entirely true, but for the most part, they are equivalent. So that's what we're going to build out of, particularly down below. The other reason I'm going to build half slabs below is that if I build using half slabs down there, I don't have to light it up as carefully because mobs won't spawn on half slabs. Now, mind you, that's bottom half slabs, not top half slabs. Mobs will spawn on top slabs now, so be very careful with that. But let's get our bottom level going. We need a 28 diameter, starting with this block right in front of me. So that's one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. And this is going to be the beginning platform for our lower level, and it will be the template for the upper level as well. So let's get a few things situated here. Uh, job one is going to be to get enough of this lower platform fleshed out that we can start building a smooth stone generator. We need to get it carefully positioned. Oh, here comes the rain. Doggone it. Not real fond of rain in this game. It's very loud. Uh, a dubious addition to be sure. 
Whoops. Um, yeah, I knew I was going to lose those. Well, one of the advantages to building up here is you can do this. You get a nice safe drop down, and you don't have to worry about it killing you as long as you don't stay underwater too long. So like I said, I did start construction on this earlier, and uh, unfortunately, uh, while I was uh, getting things situated, I actually got quite a ways along. While I was getting situated, I accidentally stepped into a pool of lava, lit myself on fire, and unfortunately, I was just weak enough that I could not get to water fast enough to put the lava out. So here we are, starting the process all over again. and. Uh, let me tell you, I, I really wish I could just forget that ever happened, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this on the up and up, and we'll go ahead and count the deaths, even when they happen off camera. So, there you go. Let's hear it for integrity, folks. <laughs> Sometimes it's not so fun. <laughs> All right, well, we have the basis for our platform down below, and uh, let's get busy building a stone generator. All right, what I'm doing is mapping out exactly where I want this thing to be. Um, I, this is the exact center of the map. Or the, sorry, this is the exact center of my platform right here. This marks the exact center of the platform. So this is going to be the bottom of the mob grinder. So now I have to figure out exactly where this uh, I want this... Uh, exactly where I want the smooth stone generator to come out and the answer is right let's see if that's the center then this is off one and this is here I want the mob grinder to come out right here now this mob grinder that I'm gonna build requires roughly a what a five by five platform is that right? And it needs to be one level above where I'm at. So, let's go ahead and mark off a 5x5 five five platform centered about this point right here. So, All right, we're back. Remember when I said I needed a 5x5 five five platform? Well, I lied. <laughs> I need a 7x7 seven seven platform, but that's okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7x7. Seven seven. Perfect. All right, so now... Oh, what did I do with all of my redstone? I think it's up above. Let me go get my redstone, and we will start building this cobblestone generator. We need you, and you, and you, and some pistons, and some glass, and I already have lava and water, so we should be good at this point. Um, yeah, should be enough. If not, I know where to get more, don't I? Okay, so we should be able to start building this right here. Actually, let me move this torch. I want a little bit more access here. Make it easier for me to get up here and work around. All right, so we start by putting repeaters there. And we're going to need a little bit of redstone to go here and here and here and here and there and there, just like that. Then we build a ring around here. I'm building a modified version of Stephen AU's uh, fast smooth stone generator here, in case you don't recognize it. And uh, you can find a link to and a how-to video on how to build this down below. 10, 11, that is the center. This hole is in the wrong spot. Ah, I'm off by one. I'm off by one. Darn it. Okay, well, it's easy enough to move it. Haven't gotten too far yet. 
we'll just have to move it, won't we? And that's okay. One, two, three, this is the wall, this is where I want the opening, right here. Okay, so let's do this again. Here, and put you there, with you on it, and this whole thing has to move. Darn it. Right here. That's okay. Next, we're going to build like this. All right. Now we need to place some more pistons. One here, one here, one here, and one here. And behind each of those pistons, we need some obsidian or a furnace or some such. I'm going to use obsidian because I have plenty of it and I don't mind going to mine more. Obsidian, obsidian, obsidian. Then we're going to use, I'm going to use glass for this because I want to be able to see it from the outside. So we're going to surround this part of it with a little bit of glass. Alright, let's get our water placed because that's the next thing we need to do. There, and pull that off to the side twice like this and over here. This should be good right here. I want another block right there. Let's come down here. I'm going to put a sticky piston right here. Good, it faced the right way. Put a block there. Now we get to put a torch right here and some redstone up there. That completes the circuit, the circuitry. Now we just need to wire up the lava buckets, which we will do right here. Lava there. Lava right there. But I want to add one little final touch before I go any farther with it. I want to go right here and place a block of obsidian there. I want to place two blocks of obsidian here. And the reason I'm doing that is so that when my smooth stone comes up here, which it should do now, it will stop. And there we go. So we now have a functioning smooth stone generator. All I have to do is stand there and I get smooth stone. All right, I'm back. All right, we've completed our smooth stone generator and we've also completed the lower platform here. So this area down here is now complete. Uh, I'm going to add a torch or two just to you know, just, just to keep this thing lit. It's not going to really matter much because these are all bottom slabs. So things can't spawn here, but things could spawn on the machine, although that lava is creating some light. So, you know, just to be safe, I'm sprinkling around a few things. Actually, I don't need these blocks here. So let's go ahead and take these back. We can use them elsewhere. Oh, lost a couple. That always happens. But yeah, we might as well collect these. Don't need these. We can reuse them elsewhere. They'll be of more use to us somewhere else. The next thing to do will be to complete the upper level and to wall everything in so that this looks like it's one solid mass of brick, even though it isn't, because it will still remain hollow inside. Um, but before I do that and get too busy here, I really want to get a, uh, a tree farm going here. It'll just be temporary but I'm gonna need a source of wood for coal so that I can 
turn my cobblestone into smooth stone because I don't really want to use my one silk touch pick to mine smooth stone. That would be a little bit of overkill, I think. Um, eventually, we'll probably have enough surplus of, of, uh, of silk touch picks that we can do that. But for now, let's just economize a little bit, shall we? Okay, so now we need to go and get some dirt, and I already have some trees, so that's good. And we're going to build a little tree farm. We will build it, uh, let's build it right here for now. Two, three, four, five, six, whoops, six, and yeah, sure, we'll go all the way to the end here. We're going to end up building around there anyway. Now I want to go up about 10 from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to put top slabs here, I mean, sorry, bottom slabs here so that I can keep my trees from growing so high that they get lots of branches. Take this back down. Put my last slab there. All right, and this gets my tree farm going. So I now have a tree farm, so I'll be able to create wood. Well, the sun is setting, and look what we've got. Our platform is complete. We now have a couple of tree farms to keep things going. We got some, got some chests over here. Relocated all the ovens back here. Put a nice fence around it all so that I won't fall off on accident. And this here is the beginnings of the bottom of our mob grinder. Now the way this is going to work is we're going to build a mob grinder up there. It's going to be 25 blocks above this floor. Most of the time, the mobs will fall down, land on those fence posts, and die. But at 25 blocks, it's really not enough to guarantee a kill. So in order to guarantee a kill, we need to do a little bit extra. That's what this is all about. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here. And we're going to put some lava here. And this will guarantee that uh, those that don't, aren't killed by the fall will die in the lava. Now, there's a reason that this opening is only one block wide. And the reason is that this mob grinder that I'm going to build is also going to accommodate spiders. So, when spiders land down here, they're going to try to come after me. They're going to come into... They're going to get blocked here, and climb up the walls, which is what they normally do. And they will also fry. So... Now what we need to do is start building. I have got a whole bunch of materials. Got some glass, I've got some stone. Let's uh, start with some stone. And we will get together some stone bricks. Just like this, and some more stone bricks. And we will turn some of those stone bricks into half slabs because I'm going to coat the bottom with half slabs and that ought to be more than enough to do that unless I mistake my count, which is entirely possible. But let's hope that's enough and let's get going. Now, the trick here is I want to go up exactly 24 before I start building my half slabs. Uh, is that right? Let's see, I want a 24 block fall, 25 block fall. So I actually need to go up 25 from here so that I can hang those half slabs off of that. That means I need, uh, what do I need? I need 21, 21 blocks high above this, right? 21 and 4 is 25, so let's get going. 
Now it's a little awkward to get back here to this ladder, but that's okay because I don't intend to be doing it a whole lot except during construction. Obviously during construction I'll be doing this a lot, but once the thing's built I'll probably never need to go up here. So I don't mind that getting to it is a little bit awkward. Here we go, this is our killing floor. Isn't that view lovely? Okay, let's start building. Let's start building off the platform. I need to build a, a round platform that's exactly like that one, except with a hole in the middle, although I probably will fill the hole to begin with. And let's get started. Okay, there we have the row of top slabs. Now, above that, we're going to put regular blocks. Now, you may you may well ask, well, why are we putting top slabs underneath the regular blocks? You know, is, do we really have to do that? And the answer is no, you don't. The reason I'm doing it is because I want uh, I don't want to deal with uh, having things dripping. I'm going to be putting water channels up here and if I don't coat this with blocks then or with uh, if I don't make the blocks at least too deep then I'm gonna have water dripping down onto that platform below and that gets uh, really annoying so rather than feel like I'm constantly in the middle of a rainstorm I put an extra layer of top slabs underneath this so that I don't have to hear the, don't have to see those drips. Okay, here we have uh, the base for the first floor of our mob grinder. Now this particular mob grinder I'm going to build uh, is going to accommodate spiders and endermen. Uh, you do not need to uh, to do that, if you don't want spiders or endermen in your mob grinder, then it's a very easy thing to do. First of all, uh, if you don't want spiders, put a half slab right there. And that will prevent spiders from spawning, because spiders need a 3x3 three three flat area in order to spawn. And that will prevent them from having such an area. But I actually do want spiders, so I'm not going to do that. If you don't want endermen, you need to make the gaps between the floors two blocks high. And that will prevent endermen from spawning since they require a, a gap that is three blocks high. But again, I'm not going to do that because I actually do want endermen to spawn. Now you may go, you may ask, why do you want Endermen to spawn if you're going to have water channels in there? Uh, the Endermen aren't actually going to be pushed by the water channels, are they? And you are correct, they probably will not. Uh, because what happens is the Endermen will spawn and they will, uh, they will walk into the water. And when they walk into the water, they'll try and teleport away. However, since the only place within range for them to teleport to is my platform down below, odds are very high that is where they are going to teleport. So, while we won't have Endermen spawning in here, we will have them, well, we will have them spawning here. While they won't be making their way through the mob grinder, they will be showing up in our platforms down, down below, and that way, if I want to kill Endermen, I can. Uh, not necessary. I can ignore them and they'll probably not bother me one bit. But if I do want them, then I will have the option of killing them. Okay, this should be exactly eight blocks long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is exactly eight blocks long. So that's going to be my, these are going to be my water channels. I'll place a water source block here. I'll place a source block there and there, which uh, will have the happy side effect of giving me another source block there that will act as an infinite spring. So I can actually take as much water as I want to from there, which will be convenient. I 
will need to be a little careful. I don't want things to start spawning up here while I'm here. So let's uh, let's prevent that with some torches right now during the day. While I'm while I'm here, it won't be a problem because I'm you know nothing is far enough away for things to spawn on it. However, once I go back down below for supplies, I'll have left this area and I will then be far enough away that I can that things can spawn up here. So I'm going to leave a couple of torches up here while I work. And I'll just remove the torches once I've moved on to the next level. Now I am not going to complete this just yet. And the reason is I need to get those glass walls in place. So let's get, I'm going to get this all done except for that one, pl that one uh, spawning pad. And then I will go down and get that la get those glass walls put in place. Yep, here we go. Here's my ladder. All right, let's put in some glass, shall we? That should be more than enough. And I am going to want a few more half slabs now that I think about it, because I'm going to want to cap off that top. OK. Let's do it this way. Oh no, my forest is burning down. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> no harm done. <laughs> That is why I wasn't planning to leave the tree farm here. <laughs> the tree farm uh, being here is a temporary measure. So there we go. <laughs> that's hilarious. That is, that's pretty funny. <laughs> It'll burn itself out eventually. There's nothing of, there's nothing that I'm really worried about getting destroyed. does make me laugh though. <laughs> oh dear. I should probably mention if you if you didn't notice the fence posts in the kill chamber down there are actually uh, nether brick fence posts. They're not wooden fence posts. That's because in version 1.3 uh, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that uh, nether, that regular fence posts are flammable. So I went with nether brick to make sure that they wouldn't burn because I know that nether brick fence posts are not flammable. I didn't want the lava to set them on fire. And it occurs to me that I'm going to have to remove those after all, so that's okay. I guess I don't really even need to use the half slabs here. And there go the other ones. That's too funny. <laughs> My poor tree farm. Whoa! 
are you doing up here? Who said you could spawn here? Apparently it's dark enough here for them to spawn. Okay. Might need to light it up a little better. <laughs> okay, we will have to be a little more careful. But now that we've got our killing floor in place, this should get a little safer because they will... Uh, they'll get washed down. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, this definitely wasn't lit up well enough. All right, we should be ready to start pouring water. Ah. All right, there we have our water channels. Now, we just need to build up the sides three high. All right, so this is what one floor looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this off so we can do some testing. And I'm going to sprinkle some torches around here so that we don't have to worry about things spawning up here, hopefully. <laughs> Although, as we've seen, uh, <laughs> that isn't always the case. <laughs> now, with each of these floors being six levels high, it, it I should be able to get, oh gosh, about six of these floors in this mob grinder and that may not sound like a lot but it ought to be more than enough considering that it is the only place anywhere in the map that anything can spawn while I'm up here so it really should be enough Let's go see what we get. Hopefully we actually get some things spawning in there. Goodness knows we ought to. Let's see what happens. Our first customer, a spider. Yeah. Right, you can see the spiders can try to get me, but they cannot get me. I'm hoping that covering that like that will be enough to keep uh, keep that fire from spreading over to my trees here. Looks like we are in business. It's only one level deep and it's already producing pretty well. That's not bad at all. Very nice. Very, very nice. I'm happy with that. Okay. Yes, I put little glowstone lamps here so when drops out here these will light up <laughs> completely unnecessary but <laughs> fun all right well with that uh, we've got one level of our mob grinder built I will build the rest <laughs> off camera so as to uh, spare you the torture of having to watch <laughs> me build it and I think we will call this an end to the episode today thank you for watching Thank you for subscribing, tell your friends, tell your enemies, and we will talk to you again next time.